and welcome to today's lecture. Today we will review KPI trends for both bar charts and time series plots. In this lecture, it is assumed that the student understands the definition of an average, sigma, and standard deviation. If this is not the case, we have added a bonus video that reviews these topics in detail. Please watch that video prior to watching this one. I'm Karina Epperly, and I'll be your instructor for this course. What is measured will improve if and only if action is taken to correct, prevent, and improve poor performance. Therefore, understanding variations seen in a KPI chart is essential in implementing the corrective and preventative actions required for improvement. Before we start, I will review the basics of common versus special cause. If you were to measure any two objects for a physical or chemical attribute, you would see that slight differences exist. These differences are called variation. This holds true in the manufacturing environment as well. For example, if the weight of 100 units of product to X coming from the same process Y were measured, we will see that slight variations exist between each unit. This variation is acceptable within a certain acceptable tolerance range for that process. The distance between the lower and the upper specification limits. Any unit that falls outside of this range is considered to be a defect. Common cause variation is variation that is inherent to the process that is random, always present, and affects every process. This type of variation exists as a natural part of the manufacturing process and an assignable cause does not exist. Special cause variation, on the other hand, is variation that is not random, not always present, and does not affect every process. It is unnatural variation as signified by an outlier, which is a point plus or minus three standard deviations from the mean, and is caused by an assignable cause. Only 0.03% of the population will fall in this location. It is a one-time event unless a special cause is not eliminated, in which case it can show up in the manufacturing process as a repeater. In this KPI chart, we see a special cause at x equal to 61.5%, while the average of the surrounding data points equals 90.5%. This is clearly an outlier. Besides special cause, KPI charts may show negative and positive trends. A negative trend is one in which the slope rises or falls in the opposite direction of the KPI goal. Here we see two charts, one that has an ascending slope and the other with a descending slope. In both cases, these charts are displaying negative trends as the slope is falling or rising in opposition to the goal. A negative trend in a KPI bar chart is displayed when the visual cues of the bar changes from green to red in successive order. Whereas a positive trend is one in which the slope falls or rises in the same direction of the KPI goal. Here we see two charts, one that has an ascending slope and the other with a descending slope. In both cases, these charts are displaying positive trends as the slope is falling or rising in the same direction as the goal. In this case, a positive trend in a KPI chart will show the visual cues of the bar changes from red to green in successive order. It is easy to detect trends when enough historical data is present or when the data follows the simple trends displayed in the previous charts. However, KPI charts very rarely display these simple and straightforward trends. This is when reading the charts and deciding on a course of action becomes complicated. A typical KPI chart looks more like this chart here, where the trends are not as obvious. Assessing trends becomes even more haphazard as the duration between points increases, such as in KPIs that are tracked on a weekly, monthly, or quarterly basis. This can lead to incorrect action, especially when goals and targets are not based on historical trends, but arbitrarily set by the company and or organization. Unfortunately, this is too often the case. In order to better assess the KPI data for plant A, I changed the chart format from a bar chart to a time series plot and added the upper and lower control limits calculated at plus and minus 1 sigma, 2 sigma, and 3 sigma. 
The equation for the upper control limit equals the average plus the standard deviation times the number of sigmas, whereas the lower control limit equals the average minus the standard deviation times the number of sigmas. Provided the data is normal, based on the normal distribution curve, 68.2% of the data population should fall within plus or minus one sigma. 95.4% of the data population should fall within plus or minus two sigma, and 99.73% of the data population should fall within plus or minus three sigma. When we flip the normal distribution curve on its side, we can see where the bands fall on a typical control chart. From the X bar to the C bands, we expect to see 68.2% of the data points fall within this band. From the X bar to the end of the B bands, we expect to see 95.4% of the data points fall within this band. And from the X bar to the end of the A bands, we expect to see 99.73% of the data points fall within this band. Anything that exceeds the A band falls in the 0.03% and constitutes as an outlier, also known as a special cause. We added the visual cues of the KPI chart to show where the data points fall in relation to the sigma bands. From this chart, we can see that the data points are failing predominantly in the first sigma band. In fact, most of the data points fall within the plus or minus one sigma. In other words, this data follows the normal distribution. Not a single point exceeds the UCL and LCL at three sigma. Therefore, the data does not exhibit special cause, even though based on the goal and targets established by the plant, there are several points that will require immediate action. In the time series plot, three points may give some concern as they are approaching the end limits of the third sigma band. Since all three points are within the 2.15% of the third sigma band, technically they are not outliers. Also, since the three points are not grouped in any way but adhere to a random pattern, they do not exhibit a trend. Therefore, this chart is still exhibiting only common cause. However, since they are approaching the end limits of the third sigma band, these three points should be in the caution or warning zone. Therefore, on those days, the data points and their process parameters should be reviewed for accuracy. If the data points are accurate, identify any special cause that may have occurred during the process. However, since these three points are still within common cause variation, during the review, bear in mind that it is possible that nothing out of the ordinary will be detected. If anything is detected, perform root cause analysis to identify corrective and preventative measures. Now that we have looked at the data plotted on an SPC chart, let's look at the data again, but this time we will apply the goal set up by the plant for this KPI. In this case, the goal is 10 with the UCL at plus three sigma equal to 12. We can work backwards and calculate what the standard deviation would have to be for this process and then calculate the remaining sigma lines. In this case, we will use the equation standard deviation equals the UCL minus the goal divided by three. After moving through the equation, the standard deviation for this process is equal to 0.667. We will input this value into the equation for the upper and lower control limits listed below. In this chart, the data is still exhibiting the same variance as displayed in the SPC chart. However, the limits established for the plus and minus sigma lines are not based on the variance displayed in the data, the voice of the process, but are instead acting as hard specification limits by listening to the voice of the customer. Therefore, we move away from looking at the data for stability and start asking whether or not the data is compliant. If we want to assess the KPI in this manner, then the voice of the process is stating that it's not capable of meeting the specifications, and therefore the only measure to take to decrease the dispersion is through applying long-term strategies. And if this is the case, then staggering the goal line is the only method to prevent failures on common cause variation, which is known in statistics as a type one error. Let's move on to more challenging trends. I have seen several KPI charts established with just a goal line. In this case, the KPI is either in or out. For example, on 116, the key performance indicator percent yield is in the red at 89.9%. An action item was properly assigned to understand why the KPI failed. 
However, on the very next day, 117, the key performance indicator percent yield is in the green at 90%. The obvious question is, is 0.1% a significant difference? Were any actions taken that resulted in the indicator going from red to green? When setting up or reviewing KPI charts, these are the types of questions that should be asked. Let's review a type 1 error. In layman terms, a type 1 error is saying that two things, upon comparison, are significantly different when in fact they are not. This is a false positive. Just like in this example where the KPI is failing at 89.9% while the other is passing at 90%. This would say that the difference of 0.01% is significant enough to say that the two numbers are different and should not be considered as coming from the same process. In this chart, we plotted the entire week for percent yield. We see that the values are failing directly at the target line with very little variation. In fact, the weekly average is in the green at 90.3%. In this example, the dispersion between the points is too minuscule to segregate the points as belonging to common versus special cause. Therefore, any immediate action driven on points that are below the goal line for percent yield will be driven on common cause. Therefore, the best course of action when faced with a KPI chart that exhibits this trend is to review the last few months of historical data. If the trend has remained the same as seen in this chart, improve the performance of the KPI as part of a continuous improvement strategy. In these two charts, there are some underlining commonalities. They both exhibit common cause and they both have poorly aligned goals and targets. This is evident by the fact that 1. Their goals and target lines are drawn directly in the common dispersion of their process and 2. These goals and targets have been established without taking into account the trends and dispersion of the historical data of their process. There are four very important points to take away from this lecture in establishing KPI charts. 1. Understand the historical data and set goals and or targets that will distinguish between common and special cause. 2. If fighting common cause variation or trying to achieve an aggressive goal, stagger the goal and target lines. 3. Establish a continuous improvement strategy to reduce the dispersion. And 4. Adjust the staggering of the goals and targets relative to the continuous improvement strategy. This completes this lecture. In lecture 8, we will discuss how to improve target and goals for KPI charts.